Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a watercolor painting and a um, little bit different setup today. Um, I normally am standing and normally have my easel in my uh, art studio, but today I'm setting my office uh, because I have to paint seated uh, because I broke my left leg and I don't know if many of you know that, but uh, I had, did send a message out on YouTube and I've missed several uh, live classes here because of it. Um, but today we're going to do a watercolor painting and uh, I have behind me a uh, tabletop easel. I have my uh, sample uh, photo here. We're going to do a painting from uh, the Adirondacks in New York. And uh, I have my value map there which you can also see have my palette back here, my water, I have another camera on my palette so when I edit the video here I'll be able to show you the uh, overlay the palette on the uh, video as well. So uh, I got my camera controls working here uh, which is what I had in the other room as well so I'm uh, hopefully going to have everything working here. So there's my sketch. Uh, the time you get this uh, the sketch will be on the website along with the reference photo and uh, I'll go over my paints and my brushes here and uh, explain to you I'm still using uh, my Mary Blue watercolors here uh, and I'm using a set of Sterling Edwards brushes. I have a, a, a blending brush here, one inch blending brush, I have a one inch flat, half inch flat, I have like a number uh, 12 round, number 8 round, a number 6 round number four round um, and I have a number six rigger. I have a few of these mop uh, quill brushes here from trickel.com. I may or may not use those. They're really good for putting a lot of water on and when I have a small painting like this it's uh, I don't need a ton of water but sometimes they make some nice interesting uh, effects on that surface. Um, my, uh, my paint, my Mary Blue uh, watercolors and uh, I have neutral tint, uh, primary blue cyan, ultramarine blue, permanent uh, violet bluish, crimson lake, um, primary red magenta, cadmium red, burnt sienna, raw sienna, yellow ochre, I have cupric green, sap green, limon yellow, primary yellow, burnt umber, still to grain brown and Auvignon orange and I have a few other colors here I'm experimenting with. I actually have a couple of gouaches here. I have a black gouache and a white gouache. Um, I have cadmium orange and I have cerulean blue and then I also have lamp black regular watercolors, not gouache, not opaque, transparent uh, lamp black and titanium white. So I have a mixture of my colors here. I'm not going to use all those. I probably won't use all the brushes. But uh, I do want to get started here and get going on this. And I think my camera setup is good. You should be able to follow me. Um, my setup here, this is 11 by 14 watercolor paper, 300 pound Fabriano Artistico white. And uh, I actually have it mounted on a 11 by 14 uh, canvas that I use for my oil painting. So it's uh, it gives it a good solid substrate here instead of having the big white uh, panel you may have seen on other videos. Um, I have this here and uh, it seems to work pretty well. It's going to give me the stability I need and uh, hopefully the, uh, uh, the give me a good surface to paint on which is what I was really trying to get with this because uh, this particular easel didn't have a background and I didn't want to have a, a huge uh, painting uh, surface here to work with. Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to put some water on this. I'm going to take off a little bit of the, the graphite from my tracing here. I'll thin it down a little bit so uh, you probably won't be able to see it. Um, from the reference photo, this is not identical. The thing I did was I put a little bridge in the back. This is a nice stream here that goes back into the woods, but it didn't have enough depth for me, so I actually put a little bridge back here. Uh, and ran the water behind it so we'll get a little more depth in this painting than was in the original photograph. Um, I don't think this bridge is actually in the Adirondacks uh, uh, Park um, but anyway it's uh, going to be a little less 
covered with the uh, graphite. So let me get some clear water here with my big brush and just start putting in a little bit for the sky. Do a little wet on wet here for the sky. Uh, come down and leave some areas for the... Uh, this is a nice fall scene. Uh, a lot of trees in the background, a whole mess of uh, bright oranges and reds in the background back there. Um, so I'm just going to uh, put in a light sky. This didn't have much of a sky. It was almost pure, pure white, if you will. Um, and uh, the photograph is actually uh, coming from uh, Facebook uh, Photos for Artists page. And uh, photographers put their photos out there for us to use free and we can uh, paint them and sell them as long as we don't sell their original photograph any any derivative we make off of it is no problem no copyright infringement but I would like to give credit to Patricia Towers who took this photo um, her many of her photos are on this Facebook page called photos for artists um, and a lot of people use that for their uh, painting to get painting ideas from and for and that sort of thing so I'm using my palette now. My setup here is a little different as you have already observed, um, but I want to try to uh, uh, use it as best I can here. I'm putting just a little blue sky up here, not much. Leave some holes for some clouds. I put a little blue over here behind these trees because I'm going to have some holes in the trees over there and maybe some here. Um, that's about it for the sky. That You don't need much. I wet it down so it's nice getting a nice um, diffused effect um, and <laughs> that's about it. You don't need a whole lot. Um, I'm going to pick up some green now. Some of my sap green. Uh, maybe put a little this yellow in it uh, to lighten it up a little bit in some areas. Uh, get another brush going here. Maybe I'll get a half inch brush and get some uh, uh, my orange, this bright orange here, this cadmium orange, which is a beautiful color. Um, it really is good for these kinds of fall scenes. I add a little bit of red to it to or make it a little more reddish orange. Um, and then I've got some yellow, so I'm going to just start throwing in some really bright, bright trees in here. Um, let them stick up. See the see how that diffuses with the uh, the water I've got on the, the paper. Uh, but where it's dry down here, it's it's not it's not diffusing because it's uh, um, the paper's dry, which you expect it to not diffuse. Um, okay, I've got this really bright orange tree right here in the middle of the painting. Um, so I'll just throw that in there and uh, pick up some greens and blues and that sort of thing for this these trees over on the left here. Um, got a mixture of green and blue and darker green. I need some uh, more blue and yellow here. Get my ultramarine blue and my primary yellow and gives me a very nice green. Um, so I'm getting some diffusion back there, you see, from, because it's wet, um, which is kind of what I wanted. I'm going to let these sort of run together in areas, leave some holes in there for uh, to show some additional depth in the painting. And let's come down here and start putting in, I'm not trying to paint every tree that I see. This uh, is a very uh, full photograph with a lot of trees in here, so I'm going to mix it up with this. Mix the orange up and this dark. My uh, value map tells me I want to have some a couple of several really dark areas in here. Um, so I'll be throwing these in and uh, overlapping some of this. Uh, and a little more green in there, get some more sap green, throw it in this area here. Um, so I've got some trees I'm going to be putting in here to make it really dark. The sap green is going to come down to the toward the bank. 
uh, where I have this water, uh, like that. Um, maybe a few more green trees back in here that are going to help overlay some of this. Um, what I didn't put in is my row of trees in the background back there. It's still kind of wet. I'm going to let that dry and paint that in wet, wet and dry. Or, yeah, wet on dry. So let's put in a few more dark greens here. I've even got some nice... I haven't washed my brush out, folks. So I have some bright green in here in some areas. So I'm going to just fill in some of these areas with some more brighter green. Um, maybe even use a little bit of my um, pure yellow. Um, has some, some really nice yellow tree hooks in here like this. Um, So there's some yellow over on this other side, yellow and uh, green in this area. Okay, so we're getting a lot of color in there, blues and oranges and yellows and greens. It really looks like a really nice fall scene. Since this is fall is starting, some cad red in there, make this really brighten it up. Okay, let's lay this down here somewhere and uh, get my big one inch brush back and Start coming back in here with some of these other colors. Um, has to be darker in there. Used to be darker in here too. See, this is starting to dry up a little bit now behind. So I can like come in over the top now and start putting in some nice looking tree uh, that are closer to us. Uh, and uh, so that's what I'm going to do here in this area. I'm going to darken it down. I'm going to pick up some of this uh, neutral tint to start getting a darker shade of my green. And I want that right in here. Kind of following my value map, if you will. Um, so we'll throw some of these in. more dark. Let's see, I'm coming down about right here where the, the grasses are going to start in this area. Um, so, um, see if I got time, if the time is right to do a little scraping out here, maybe I can, I don't know. Yeah, I'll put in a few trunks. If you get it just right, the, the water will push away and it'll make a nice white line. If you get it too late, it doesn't do anything. If you get it too early, it just fills back in and makes a uh, um, colors back in, makes a dark line, basically. Uh, um, so let's throw in some of these more. So we're just trying to Put in some nice looking trees here that kind of, there we go. All right, um, up here I'll throw in some, maybe some brown uh, trunks up there in a little bit, but uh, I want to kind of get this finished off. I have another dark tree area here that I want to put in. Like right in, uh, there's some little dark in here. Pretty dark. Throw that in. So each time I put a layer over something that's there, you start seeing 
depth. So that's how you create depth in a painting. You just let, let it dry a little bit and then come back and put a little more uh, dark in. Let's see, this is going to be dark down here. Some of this is going to be really dark. I want it to kind of connect so we have some um, dark connections here. Another little dark tree in. So you see it building up. Each time I put a layer over, a darker layer over a lighter layer or a lighter area, it's kind of hard to put a lighter area over a darker area with watercolor, but you can certainly put dark over light. And uh, that's what I'm doing here. Um, all right, um, let's see. Over here we've got more trees coming out. This is all full of trees over there on the right side. Let's go over there and put some more stuff in over here. I get some more oranges in, reddish colors. Um, yeah, where I want this to go here. Bright orange, bright reddish orange in this area here. This cadmium orange is really a bright, potent color. It really covers up and uh, dark it down to the bottom here as we come by this bridge. Um, around behind it maybe. I want to make sure that it stands out. So I'm going to throw in some of this here. And get some more sap green, some more ultra blue. And um, just sort of fill in here between these two. Put another layer of some trees like this. And um, Even throw in a maybe trunk or two here. And there's a little bit of scrape outs there. Some over here, maybe just a tad there. All right. Um, I think I'm getting a nice feel for a close up set of trees here. At least it seems like it to me. Now, how am I doing? Got a mess in my palette. Um, but down here we've got more grasses and shrubs and bushes. So I'm just sort of mixing up my colors here, throwing in big globs. Some room, leave some room for some rocks down here on the left side. Throw in a few other colors, redden it up. If I put some red with this green, it sort of grays it down a little bit. I think you probably already know that. Um, but if you don't, I will tell you again that red and green make a gray. Because they are opposite colors on the color wheel posing colors. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of area behind these rocks now. Kind of leaving that other side over there for later painting. I'm back with my big big brush here and see if I can throw in a few more um, grasses here. all comes down. All right, I kind of like the looks of that when I turn around and look at my background here. Or I'm going to look at my monitor. I have a monitor right over there behind me that I can look back and see what, hopefully, what you're seeing. Not for sure, but I think that's what you're seeing. Um, greens here, pick up a few more darks and highlight around this bridge. 
like this. I want that to be a little bit soft back there, so it looks like I've got some, uh, I don't know, uh, some depth, some fogginess back there behind the bridge a little bit so that it doesn't uh, look like it's right up here in our face. Um, I'm just lightening that up, putting some clear water in it and uh, giving myself a little bit of a room there to, to lighten that up. Um, because I want it to match what's down below this bridge here. And I want it to look like it's got a little depth in it. So, so I'm lightening it up on purpose back here to kind of give that uh, appearance of depth. May not be able to see that yet until I get that bridge in, but uh, um, hopefully you're going to be able to see it shortly. Um, I do see another bright orange tree over here that I want to see if I can nail down. Reddish orange. Um, in this area, where is he? Well, let's see, maybe not quite there, but I'm going to throw a little bit of orange in here. Um, just some color, come back and get some my yellow, pure yellow, primary yellow. Um, mix that in, throw in a little bit here to uh, get some more coloring going on here. Some of it will be diffused, some of it will be hard edge. Um, Okay, so much for that. That's enough. When you're painting on 11 by 14 paper here, it's not, uh, and using big brushes, of course, like I do, uh, it's not really hard to paint a lot in a hurry. So I'm trying to do a lot here in a hurry. And getting a pretty good mixture of stuff on the paper. Um, a lot of greens. I'm going to come back and put some more greens in here. Leave this dark in. I'll come back and maybe i got grasses down below this, so I want to leave some things in the grass like that. And now I'll come back and get me some more green. Ultra blue. And, uh, oh, don't tell me. Some greens in there. Tons of trees back here. Okay. Throw some stuff in there and just get it come back, try a different brush, come back and get some more greens. A lot of green in this, but I'm trying to tone it down so that it's not all all green. I don't want it to be all all green. I want co different colors in here. So that's kind of nice over there. more just all right um, got some dark places in here in some areas and some below where this bridge is going to be in here throw in some 
grass is there. All right. So far, I've only used a one inch flat and a half inch flat for all of this. Um, so you see, I've given this little fogginess here, which lets you see back that it's got a little depth going on there, which is what I was really trying to do. And uh, over here, I want to leave some wet areas here for some a few of these types of uh, scrape outs if I can. I don't want to overdo this. Sometimes I get carried away and uh, make it look worse, but uh, hopefully it's not going to be too soon. They're going to give me some room here. Okay, just little scrape outs. Uh, that's fine. All right, now down here in this area here, this is all light grasses, blue, um, yellowish grasses. I probably should could, could throw some ochre in there to get some a uh, little bit different colors. Pick up a little ochre and yellow, primary yellow, and maybe I'll mix it with some of that stuff I got in my palette. But I want to throw some of these in here. So where I left those dark areas. Um, be able to come back and paint right over it and it looks like I've got grasses growing up in there. Um, so I'll put a little green, more greenery in here maybe. Got the, this little river coming down this way. I want to paint around it. Get a little darker as we get toward the bottom where it touches the water. This is going to be water level down here, so let's put in some darker grasses at the bottom. If you get this just right, your brush will pull the pull apart and we'll leave those um, looks like a thousand little little brush strokes in there, but it's all because the brush is just pulling apart and uh, looks like you've made a lot of individual brush strokes, which I didn't. There we go. All right. I think maybe I want to pick up a few browns here. Okay, something like that gives us a good feeling, I think. Throw in some more greens in here, maybe another dark section with here. It's a big area that's kind of all one tone over there, so I want to break that up a little bit, give myself some few other things in there to look at that are closer because they're darker. So just link them together, pull them down, attach them to the ground and that's enough. Okay, enough of that. All right, now, so my bridge, so if I, one of the tests for a, a painting is to see if you don't have uh, a good composition is if you cut this painting in half and look the left side and right side, you don't want them to look identical. I do have similar colors for balance, but they don't look identical. So that's uh, uh, what I was attempting to do here um, with making this side look different than the other side. So we have the right side looks a little different. And uh, so have some Areas that kind of fit into the grasses here. Goes along the water's edge. I got some rocks in here I want to paint around. Okay, so you're starting to see, starting to see the little creek that comes down here. I painted the creek, but uh, it's there. Um, I got to put down some more grasses over here. Gonna come down to the creek's edge like this, and let's throw in some 
more darks in here. Paint around some rocks in the bottom. Um, here, let's do do this. We tell, we're telling the viewer this sort of goes up this way, which is what I want want you to see. So let's throw these up that way. All right. Uh, a little bit of dark maybe behind this rock. Another rock here. You can't see these rocks, I'm sure, because I've got the drawing the sketch is so light, it's really hard for you to see it. Um, but the water is really dark. So if you notice in my value map, the uh, I have this whole dark area, this area here that's really dark, which is reflecting what's above it. And I have another dark area over here, which is reflecting what's above it. So. We'll put that in a little bit, but right now I want to work on these um, these rocks back here. I'm gonna get a round brush out and see if I can pick up some of my still to grain brown. I get some water in there and loosen it up. The thing about these my Mary blue paints is you can really get them reconstituted to a nice paintable flow very easily. They stay sort of semi-dry when they're in the palette and they really come back to life very quickly. Just kind of one of the, one of the things I like about them. Okay, um, down here we got a few, I'll just paint a few more of these rocks that are sort of the same color. Leave a little highlight on top for them so you can tell they're getting a little bit of sun over here from somewhere. Since I made my sky really light and sort of bluish. Um, all right, let's put a little base, some dark base on this down here, on this way. Another little rock type thing here. So I'm just trying to fit these little rocks in dark underneath and uh, put some water in there and see if I can get it to sort of blend together a little bit. Yeah, it's starting to match what's going on back there. If we get a little bit of a, just a little bit of a water's edge and let it bleed just a little bit into your, into your water. Uh, Start getting just a little bit of that look of the water coming down here, which is what I was trying to do. Um, don't want it real dark, I want it light. It's really supposed to be a light, kind of a light area back here all the way back. But that water, putting this, putting some clear water on, letting it bleed into What's, what's my water area? Um, helps tie it in. It makes it look like it's part of the, the water and it's not just a, something stuck on. Okay, let me get a little more, more browns in here maybe. There we go, something like that. And I'm getting some of that bleeding from, the, from those rocks in here, which is good. By just using a little clear water and letting it just sort of blend together uh, and uh, really light. Back here, there's water back here that's got the same issue, same kind of thing going on. So I'll make it back there. Um, what I didn't do is make this a little bit darker in some areas back here. There is some, uh, there's a bank here with some bushes and stuff on it, so I want that to look like the water continues on back there. All right. Now let's see if I can get another rock or two in here. Get some dark bottom on this guy. Maybe put a little rock in here, one like this. Um, well, like this with a little bit of coming out into the water. So these are just 
nondescript little things going on. All right. Nice rocks, really some dark stuff going on back in here for the water. Um, well, I think I can maybe wet that down now. Get some clear water and just start wetting a little bit of this down. So I'm just wetting this paper now. Really, oh, I'm going to wet all of it, I think, just so I can have my... and get this water in in like one, one big fell swoop. Okay, so I'm getting this good and wet. And while it's wet, we're going to come in and start dropping in these colors that uh, represent the trees above, get some real dark in there in some areas, and some green, and I uh, want it to kind of come down this way. Change it up, throw in some other colors, throw in some oranges. bright reds in there in some areas. Maybe there's a little orange over here. A little bit of yellow and green over here. And back to some really dark. Okay, and come back and and some more. Okay, you got to be bold with this. You can't be too timid or you end up with a mess. You got to kind of go at it, get it, nail it down quickly. These vertical, vertical brush strokes tell you that's kind of very still water in there. some dark streaks to kind of indicate trunks of trees back there. Over here we might have a tree or two trunk showing. On the other side over here it's just sort of a mess of green. Um, got some light green, sort of a yellowish green up close here. It's getting dried out on me over there. Uh -huh pull out my little spray bottle and see if I can wet that down again. There we go. Spray bottle is good for that kind of stuff. Like that. Now let's get some uh, darker green. Pull it down here like this. Like that. Okay, this area back here I think needs to get some, I'm getting a blossom there from having water. Okay, it looks like glass. I've got some interesting little blurbs here for my spray bottle that I didn't plan on, but they look pretty nice. I'm going to leave them alone. Mm -hmm. Throw in a few tree trunks here if I can get a dark enough color. color. And um, yeah, 
You notice I left out that whole back area, this whole area back here that's got trees in it back there. I left that whole thing out so far. I may come in and put a glaze or two back there just to show there's more depth in this. Uh, take my brush here and sort of blend some of this out. It looks too artificial almost. Um, there we go. All right. I don't have my bridge in yet. Um, let me see. Get my little flat here, my half inch flat. See if I can get that bridge in back there. Add a little human touch to this thing that there's actually something going on back here. That bridge wasn't even there, right, in the photo, so I'm just sort of ad-libbing that, putting it in. <clears throat> Put a little pillar or so, something here to hold it up. Another pillar over here. Probably need a little more dark than that. Let's darken it down just a little. Put in a. Looks a little bit like a bridge, I believe. At least you might look at it and say, hmm, is that a bridge? A little abstract nature of it. Put a little angle in here like that. Might make it look a little more bridge-like. That would be an angle that you might not see in nature right there. Something like this. All right. else that I got to do here. Um, I have some other rocks that I can put in. This is still almost too wet to put them in. Um, so I think I'm going to go back and maybe put just a little of this background trees in. I'm going to come up here with some clear water, get it kind of soft in some areas, especially around these areas where I've got trees. up here like this. It was a big, beautiful looking um, background in there. Picking up some orange. Different colors here. few greens and throw in some greens in there. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Normally I put the background in first. Today I didn't.
touch in there like that. It almost looks like there's a waterfall here, but I suppose it could be a waterfall, but I'm just going to let it sort of play out. Um, usually some horizontal strokes also help tell the story about uh, making that look more like uh, still water and glass. See how wet that is. Uh, come back and get a maybe I can put a little rock or two in there. I don't know. It may be too wet. I may mess it up, but I'll I'll see if there was a place for a rock like right in here somewhere. Like right in there, there was a rock of some kind. Actually, there was a big rock in here, but I'm making it a little smaller than necessary. So these are just sort of helping fill out the um, this area of the water that's got a lot of space in it. Take that and when you put that rock in, just come back and take some clear water. Sort of touch up the bottom edge and let it blend with what's on the around it and it'll look like it's sitting right in that water. You see how it sort of bleeds down? And uh, there's some other rocks on the other side over there. Maybe I'll throw a couple of those in over here somewhere. There were, actually, there was a whole bank of rocks. There was a bunch of rocks along over here that I didn't even put in. Uh, so I'll just kind of scrub in some little browns here in some areas, maybe fill some of this out that is white, get rid of that, some of that white. Uh, still the grain brown is what I'm using for this. A very beautiful brown color. Um, there's some little rocks type formations out in here and I'm just sort of again I'm not following the photograph as much as I'm just kind of putting some little abstract shapes in out there that make it look like there's something sitting in the water that the water is not real deep um, pick up a little water and a little bit of this darker color put a base into these guys and let them bleed into the bleed into the water that's there. So this area up here needs to be a little filled in. It's a little bit too much white space there. I'm going to, sometimes I want to go back and just kind of fill in some of these areas that are, look like there's too much, too many white spots. Uh, area back there I didn't uh, put anything on the top of that bridge where the uh, little concrete things are sticking up here. but. Uh, I'll throw a few things in there to sort of clean those up maybe. All right, I think it's time to stop fiddling around and uh, let you give this a try. Um, never hurts to, uh, on something like this, it never hurts to throw just a little bit of splatter on it. Uh, since I'm painting in my office now, I don't want to get splatter everywhere, but I do want to throw a few um, get some really wet paint here in a, in, a, in a rigger and just sort of spot it in there like that. You can't probably can't even see some of that but uh, that helps uh, a little bit and I'll take that same color I guess and since I got it and put a little bit of signature down here Okay, folks, um, I'm thinking that that's about all I'm going to do there. I probably could clean up a few places there, like maybe I don't like the looks of that exactly. I could maybe clean that up a little bit, but uh, pretty much uh, I've got everything in there I wanted. I've got the, the background. It's still foggy. It's not as bold as it was in the photograph because I didn't want that much bright color in the background. I want you to focus in on the, the beautiful trees there. And uh, so I'll zoom back and uh, in my makeshift studio here and say thank you for watching. Check out my Facebook page. Uh, uh, check out the, uh, the sketch will be on my website by the time you see this. Uh, so you can download that. You can download the original photo and uh, give it a try. Let me know how you do. I hope you like this uh, 
new setup I got here, I'm going to be stuck with a broken leg for at least another four to six weeks before I can put any weight on it. So uh, I may do another one or two paintings like this in my new studio here and uh, see how it works. So I think that's all I wanted to tell you. So until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.